You received a call from an inmate at the Department of Corrections. This call will be recorded and monitored. If you wish to block any future calls of this nature, dial 7 now. To accept this call, press 5 now. To decline this call, hang up. Well, hello there, zombie. How are you? Ah, education. I've been talking to a few people who taken advantage of some of the resources in prison and I'm glad you're working on your education. It goes to show that you care about your future, care about your life, and that you're doing things for yourself. And that's what it's all about. Good, good. And uh, how are things going as far as, you know, your day-to-day -day activity? Yeah, a lot of that's happening because of the shortage of manpower. So I guess that maybe while you're sitting in your cell, you could do some studying or listen to some music, make phone calls. Okay. And and it does help to have a good uh, bunkie there with you. Mm, well, that's something that I have been... Uh, looking at too there's uh there's a few news magazines and articles on that subject i i don't like how we just bounce from subject to subject out there you know we're all living in this this company you know countries are no longer for the people they're for profit and for uh, an audience and suicide is not something that you can just push aside. You know, year after year, the number one best-selling book is the Bible. And since it's always number one, they just kind of put it to the side. And so actually the number one best-selling book is the second one behind the Bible. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I mean, cookbooks up there. But, you know, the, it, you, you look at it like this. If you if you do the bestseller list and every year the Bible's on there, you, you're going to want to try to give a little break to uh, right, right. And, and, and that's, that's, that's quite understandable. So, uh, right. Uh, yeah. And, and that's, uh, and that's, that, that goes along with uh, what we're what we're seeing out there. It's just with suicide, it's it's a huge issue, and you can't just say, "Well, since it's in the news every day, let's put it aside." When COVID was out there, we talked about the death rate, we talked about the infection rate, and we talked about the spread, and that was information people needed to know so they could be. Uh, pay attention to it. Of course, all of the little fixes for it were, were silly. It's just, I compare the immunity to it just like the common cold. The body's going to fight off an infection. If it's strong enough, it'll win. If it's not, it may need some help. And otherwise, it the infection's going to win. And we could have people die from pneumonia. We could have people die from uh, the flu. But it's just something that we're going to go through. These things pop up, and, and since we're interacting outside, they're going to be spread quite a bit. You know, if you, we go to a store, we sneeze into our hand, we open a door, somebody comes behind us, it just it's just a fact of life. Okay. You right. have 60 seconds remaining. And suicide with your uh, friend's sister? That's... That's not something that you that you just push under the, the rug. It's a serious issue, and it needs to be mentioned every day. It needs to be on the news every day. We, we pretty much need to just float that information out there so that people who are thinking about suicide will call the, the number or reach out to people because it's something that's fresh on our mind. It's like advertising. You have 30 seconds remaining. And I think, I think that'll work. But... You know, the, the suicide people, they know how it affects their family. 
and sometimes they'll leave notes for it. it it's not the family that really could pull them out of it it's just in their mind there's something so devastating that living is just no longer on the table oh i will i'll, I'll definitely reach out to her and, and uh, try to get with the family and Hello, welcome to AQS Inmate Call. I am your host, Joel Wilborn. And um, today's subject is the effect of peer pressure on, on uh, teenagers. We, we, ha- we definitely have a crisis out there where with social media, we can reach out to more people at pretty much all hours of the day. So, uh, adults, when I get on Twitter, I know a lot of them will call a person out, say, you're just a troll, or I'm not talking to you anymore, or they block them, or they get rid of them. And that's just common nature for them. You know, it's pretty much when we grow up, we learn that if there's people that are just regular jerks, that don't know how to interact with folks and they don't want to uh, have you as a friend you can just walk away from it and uh, it works I mean we don't have to be friends with everybody in the world there's times we just have to agree to disagree or just not agree at all and and break it off and uh, to me that's a normal process and it's a very healthy process but a lot of teenagers they really thrive the community and they could be in a very loving caring family and do well in that family and and, you know if if daughter has an issue she can talk to mom and mom will listen and mom will respond and mom will do things to uh, try to make her daughter's life easy because she's a good mother yet that doesn't mean that daughter is not going through an issue that she can't handle and looks to suicide as the only way out. And I'm not saying that suicide surprises people. Maybe daughter might be uh, found in bed um, with an overdose. And mom rushes her to the hospital and says, well, what happened? What are you doing this? And daughter could talk about it, and daughter can go to counseling, and then daughter could wind up shooting herself. It's just that uh, I think we'll, the real issue in something like that is if we don't at least try. And there are a lot of incidences that we don't hear about on the news or in social media where the, the suicidal tendencies were dispelled and in the teen years we learn that's a learning process it's just like uh, an infant or toddler and even people in grade school they're learning and uh, what we learn makes us stand out from all the other creatures in the world you know we're not born with these instincts on how to handle suicidal thoughts or how to handle uh, things that uh, that make us feel just plain terrible you know it's just <clears throat> it's just the way things are and uh, but we we look to others to help guide us and if we get the proper training it's not to say that we're going to be able to get through every situation out there it's just that we know that there are other alternatives there's never one way out and I think that's one of the things that suicide victims run into the only way out is suicide not talking to mom not seeking counseling not changing a diet or moving out of state it's the suicide And if we're going to teach anything in school, why not 
have the teacher get up and, and, and say, you know, if you have suicidal thoughts, what do you think you can do to, uh, to help dispel those? And it, rather than diving into a person's personal life, and a lot of teenagers are very private, they don't want to share mental anguish or uh, rejection or anything like that with people that they know, you know, a teacher could just ask for some suggestions. And you know, if a teen hears another teen say, I, I had some thoughts once and I talked to my uncle who was able to get me through it. And this person is willing to talk, to speak out about it in public. And if somebody after class goes up and says, I'm really considering suicide. Um, what would you suggest for me? And that's, that has more of an effect on somebody. And it could be anybody, not just a teenager. Than reading a book or watching a, a video. Or even sitting in a class with an instructor. You know, it's just this one-on-one. And I've known a lot of cases where a person sitting in class and not really know anything about the person sitting next to them until there's an open discussion. And usually that happens in counseling sessions and in uh, meetings that people have. And that's why we do it. To bring out things that people can share. And sharing is a good tool to use in the healing process. So if a person attempts suicide and fails, it doesn't mean you have to throw all your attention at the person and watch the person under a monitoring service, you know, video monitoring. It just means that they're, they don't see another way out. And just sitting down one-on-one and listening not offering all this advice and this is what I because that's that's not the issue the issue is there's something in the mind that is so so destructive that living another day is more painful than the thought of dying So what I would like the world to do is just to keep this issue up, especially with social media. Um, one thing parents realize is that children are their property until 18. Like it or not, a 15-year-old is owned by parents. So if a parent says you will wear your jacket when you go outside, the the child doesn't really have a choice. They could fight and protest, but it's best to at least work something out. And that's why our children are well protected, because we, we take care of them. Once the child reaches 18, though, that's the child's choice to, to listen to the parents seek the advice and even though an 18 really isn't completely mature and should be allowed to stand on their own that's that's the standard and we can work around that but a 17 year old doesn't have the right to privacy that an 18 year old has so if mom says give me your phone unlock it. I want to see what kind of text messages you've been sending. I want to see what kind of social. And if this is done for the child's entire life, you know, for 17 years, this kind of action was taking place. It's relatively normal for the 17 year old. And maybe a friend could be over and say, why do you let your mom do that? What doesn't your mom do it? My mom's been doing this all my life. She's doing it to protect me. So, well, this is your privacy. You have a right to privacy. I'm a 17-year-old. I'm completely under my mom's care. And I respect that. 
It's something we should teach our children. Respect your parents. And as parents, we need to realize that we're not a teenager's friend. We're the parent. Yes, it would be nice to be able to listen to music, dance, make videos, and go out to movies. But those days are behind the parents. They're gone. When they chose to have children, they gave up this this child atmosphere, and you don't relive it through your child. I mean, if you know, when a parent wants to hang out with other parents on a parents day out or something like that, and go dance and karaoke and and get drunk or something, that's fine. But don't expect to do that with the kids. Maybe an adult child, twenty five year old. But not a sixteen-year-old. That way, a child doesn't see the parent like a a friend, and a friend can turn on a person. You know, seventeen-year-old Junior could uh, go over to his friend's house, another teenager, and and his friend could say, "I don't want to play video games. I I, I want to." Uh, Watch horror flicks, and they could get into a little debate. Well, I came over here to play video games. I don't want, and they could just go separate ways and never see each other again. And a teenager ex- expects that. There's times that people move away, people die, people、uh, grow up. You know, it's just the teen years don't last forever, and teenagers aren't dumb enough to think that they will. So they want to have as much fun as they can, and that's when they're learning. And so,、uh, to act as a friend, that's in the back of a teenager's mind. Is these friends can leave, even though we'd like them to be forever, and that's the, the general goal. They're not. And teenage years are just that. They're the teenage years. They come, they go. And so, it's not out of ordinary for a parent to look at social media to just kind of pop in out of the blue. It's like, oh, now you're interested in it. All this time, I've been on social media, been doing TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. You've never done anything, but now here, here you are. That's going to take some tough explaining, and the parent should seek. Counseling from a a professional, or read a book, or look at a video, because that's what parents do. They can learn from different forms of communication, and we'd rather have them learn what's right and wrong from the parent than from a peer. So, if you do go in to talk to a teenager, and this is the first time you're actually showing this kind of interest. Make sure you set it up properly, and those who've been watching it will know if there's things that have been deleted, or if there's another phone that's been hidden. And I like the idea that a parent is that involved in a child's thing because, in a recent news, um. Item. There was a person who was just just devastated by a video that was shown on social media, and was just mistreated. We don't know the story behind the person, what caused all of this, but the suicide proved that there was something going on inside that mind. Something that was so awful that this young lady could not live anymore, and we can't help people with their with these thoughts unless we know the problem. Once again, the first step in solving a problem is to identify it, not assume, not take a best guess, not to read into it. And not to accept every answer, but just to really look into this, to really find out what's going on. 
and I think you know since um, so a lot of stuff that happens on social media is private especially those people who go on social media know what teenagers like because teenagers like affection they like love they like to be complimented they, they, they like to be part of a group and these people know that and so they get in there and they'll send pictures that aren't real. And there's telltale signs. You know, you go to the website and they've just joined or there's just a handful of pictures and there's rarely any friends. But a teenager may not catch that right away. It's just like, wow, this person is saying some of the things that nobody else says to me. And then this person gets into the point where somehow they talk the teen into sending pictures that are then used to blackmail the teen. And then the teen could just be so embarrassed and so devastated that suicide is the best way out. And a parent who's watching this will know when there's a, a predator out there and can help save the child's life. And if a parent does lose a child, it's not too late to learn what happened. It's not too late to share that information and to help other people. We want to prevent suicide. And yeah, we're concentrating on mass killings. And yes, the weapons are the number one killer out there. But there's also suicide. And there's also bullying cyberbullying and these need to be watched as well there's not just one thing you know you don't want to look at a, a child's appearance and say no don't think you're fat don't think you're ugly don't think you're you're not smart enough to to be out in the world we're going to show you that you may not fit in everywhere but there are a lot of places where you do a lot of places where you can be happy we can work on that we can work on ways to prevent uh, bullies from taking over. You know, teach teenagers that the only power people have over you is what you give them. And uh, if you're a regular church attender, don't force your child. Come home, talk about the stuff that was discussed in church and what it means to you. And maybe eventually, just like, okay, I'll go with you next Sunday. Just don't give up. And yeah, I did foster parenting for some of the most rebellious kids in the universe. But I didn't hate them. And I didn't fight back. I did the best I could to be there for them. And it made a difference. And when I work with people that are incarcerated, I'm there for them. It makes a difference. You could learn a lot about a teenager by talking to a 40-year-old ex-convict about what he found that was terrible in his life and how he managed to turn around. So, spend some time. Do a board game. You know, do a... a just go out and, and say, let's, let, let's go for a walk and talk. And, you know, find instances where you can just sit and discuss things. Bring up a topic and then spend a lot of time listening and responding to the answers. And that's the kind of interest that we need to give to our children. And I highly recommend that. Suicide is still out there. It's still an issue. So is COVID-19. You can turn on the news and you can hear about somebody using a... a a rifle to kill a bunch of people. But that's that's not the biggest cause of death out there. Uh, drugs are a big cause of death. Suicide. Automobile accidents. So while we're all over here looking at a, a weapon that isn't used in that many murders... People are dying by other means. 
It's almost like I'm off. Every day, think in your mind, suicide, car accidents, drug overdoses, and being shot at a school. All of these are forms of an unnatural death and should be discussed regularly. Same thing with escape plans. If there's a fire, how do you get out? If somebody breaks into the house, what do you do? What numbers do you call? Who do you turn to if uh, somebody is is found unconscious on the floor? These are important things to a business. These are important things to a family. And family should be first. Family should be important. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, I ask that you talk to your friends, family, neighbors. Watch some of the videos from people that have been incarcerated on my YouTube channel. And have yourself a wonderful day and make fantastic memories for tomorrow.